This is Project Dionysus, and for those of you who don't know, Sean and I actually used to work in a bar together, and more specifically, we ran a cocktail bar. And with that came an overwhelming number of orders, and we actually sat there and said, well, wouldn't a machine be nice? And that's exactly what this is. Project Dionysus has a full set of spirit pumps, mix of ours, allowing you to make any combination of drink and cocktail that you like. Now there are a few modes on this which we'll go through, the first one being a mixer mode which allows you to make your traditional drinks like a bourbon and coke and a vodka lemonade, something nice and easy if you just want to quickly make it. The next is obviously our cocktail mode and what I like about this is it does it six times faster than the average human or so whatever Google told me, it does it in about 30 seconds. So I'm sure there's some of you out there who can make a cocktail in 30 seconds, I'm not denying the human strength here. So the next two modes after that are our obviously cleaning and priming mode which is sort of self-explanatory. We just don't want this thing to become a fruit fly trap so we're gonna move on from there. But the cocktail mode is quite significant here because what you can actually do open this thing up, got your sexy electronics there, plug your laptop in and reprogram your cocktails on an event by event basis. Now, although there are a number of things this machine can do, such as impress your significant other by making them a drink. You want a drink, babe? Yeah, bro, Oh, that's actually not bad. <laughs> by making a drink with no human intervention and by changing the cocktail you like, the most amazing thing about this is there's so many different combinations of cocktails you can make. We literally have four spirit pumps and four mix of ours. Now, while James has explained how the actual, like, outside face looks and how the user interacts with it, I'll explain how the background mechanical components work. Now this is where all the drinks are allocated. We have four spirits on the bottom and four mixers that attach to the top. Now the spirits are attached through peristatic pumps here, which use a pressure vacuum to suck liquid through. Now these are used for dosing, which means we can get exact milliliters into the actual shot glass so you can get the same amount of spirits no matter how many times you run it, which is perfect for us. Now the mixers themselves use a servo-controlled bore valve. Now commercially these things cost a few hundred dollars. We were able to replicate them for under $50 each, which has been done before but very difficult to do, so very chuffed to have it working. The other thing that we do have running here is how the actual bottles clip into the machine. So the design behind it means that you can change bottles on the fly. So if you have a bottle come out, you re-screw on this little attachment here. Um, let's say you change bottles, you then turn the valve down, force it in, and then flip it up, and then it straps in at the top to make sure that it never gets lost. Back to you, James, at the studio. Now, into the three things I learned while building this. Number one being, if you're gonna work on a full-scale cocktail machine, Invest some time and money into waterproofing and sealing your pipes and your threads properly. This is not something we considered in the first instance because it is can get quite expensive, sorry. And you really don't want to be cleaning up messes and spills every single time you use this. So that's a strong suggestion from us. Number two, I hate gravity fed systems after building this, especially in cocktail machines. It was honestly really inconvenient um, in the end, even though it seemed like a good idea on paper, it just didn't come through. The reason being is obviously you get those speeds coming through the pipes, encouraging that mixing when it flows into the glass and in the end it just wasn't worth it I'd much rather everything to be a pump system number three this isn't really a lessons learned we sort of already knew the principle but I wanted to flag Sean's innovation here now whenever you build these open air systems where air can come in from underneath the tube and get into your bottle it creates what's called an airlock and you need to relieve the pressure somehow so looking at this thing that Sean made is a little innovation where you've got an air pocket here allowing air to come through into the bottom of the bottle and pushing the liquid down. So effectively displacing that negative pressure, allowing the liquid to fall by gravity or else the liquid will just go nowhere. So that was a really, really cool thing Sean sort of made up. And now we have three things I would actually do better next time on this. So the first one being is that have a bigger screen. So see this little LCD screen here? The reason we put this in is because one, it was cheap and two, it was easy to program in our first prototype here. But what I would have is a nice interactive touch LED screen, similar to the ones that you see on cruise ships when the robotic cocktail arm makes its drink. It's much more interactive, easy to use, and kind of looks better altogether. Number two, 
have this accessible via IoT. So as I showed earlier, to reprogram this, you have to actually open the door, plug your computer in and upload a new code, which can get kind of inconvenient every time you've got to use this for an event and change the menu. What I'd actually do is rather than having an Arduino, have a Raspberry Pi as a server, allowing me to access the computer over Wi-Fi and upload my new drinks directly there. So many interactive ways of doing that. Number three. Now I'm sure if you're watching this, you've probably picked this up already, but this is damn big. It's inconvenient, it takes up a lot of real estate. And the reason that that is, is because we actually made a 3D model and decided to just implement it without, I guess, a second thought. Now, the reason it's so large is because one, going back to that gravity fed system, you needed quite a bit of pipe run at the top here to go below. So if we did pump systems, I reckon this could have been much smaller. Putting that value engineering in is a big part of any engineering project. You need to look at the cost versus the benefit aspect. And unfortunately, the budget blew out like I alluded to earlier on this is because it was so large. But in the grand scheme of trying to move it around to different places and whatnot, I think going with something smaller in the future would be much more efficient. So my final take on this, after we've criticized this a lot, it's time for some positive feedback. And I honestly reckon this is better than the ones we see on cruise ship because it's simple and straight to the point. Whereas the ones with the robotic arms are kind of complicated. They take a long time to make your drink. They often underestimate and overestimate and they're prone to spilling as well. Also, I think it's just an aesthetical thing thing for a look. It looks cool when they're making the drink. Obviously that's fine, but I have had a cocktail from them before and it's not as simple as this. Whereas this is obviously just a pump running, getting your drink made, you take it and it's just pure convenience. Alrighty, so instructions are available via our Patreon, including STL files, code and list of materials and all of that jazz. So if you wanna get on here, please challenge our design, challenge where we've done it and show us the results. We're really passionate about bringing a community together and growing as a team here. This is what the Engineering Dads is here to do. So if you can support us in any way that you can, that would be much appreciated. We have loads of extra content planned for Patreon subscribers and obviously bringing content to YouTube more and more. So please get on there, have a look at our previous videos, have a look what we've done, provide feedback and we're keen to grow together. Thank you.